Hello and welcome to another Bible study with the Feed My Sheep Foundation video channel. Uh, today on the channel we are starting uh, in this uh, video, we're starting a new book. And the book we're going to go into is a three chapter book. It is entitled Zephaniah. And Zephaniah, uh, who was another uh, prophet from the Old Testament. And we're going to start with chapter one in this video. Now, and let me explain to you why I am going forward with this Old Testament book in reference to uh, Bible study, because I usually, well, actually, I was going forward with a prophetic ministry uh, books, Jeremiah, Isaiah, Ezekiel, and then Hosea. But Zephaniah also speaks to the book of Jeremiah. In the aspect that Jeremiah and uh, Zephaniah was given the same revelation in reference to the house of Judah while they were in Jerusalem. And Zephaniah was actually given the revelation prior to Jeremiah getting his. Because whenever Jeremiah got the revelation, God was actually getting ready to go forward. They didn't have much time. But Zephaniah, is, he, went, he was in Jerusalem telling them that God's judgment is coming. OK, that it is going to go forward. It is going to uh, there is a judgment day is going to come. OK, and so he's pressing the need for revival because they have gone through a, a revival. They had a revival during the time when Josiah. This is also during the period when Josiah was uh, reigning as king. We did do a Bible study or a video on uh, Josiah also because because he was one of the kings of Judah. So. We have a video in reference to his reigning while he was his rulership as he was the leader over Jerusalem. And he was known to the Heavenly Father as being a king who did that which was right in the eyes of the Lord. Now, again, that was Josiah's reign, but it was his son, uh, Zebedee, Z I'm sorry, Zedekiah, King Zedekiah, his son, who actually did that which was evil in the eyes of the Lord after Josiah's reigning and rulership had went forward. And so therefore, uh, during this period that we're going to hear from Zephaniah, this is while uh, King Zedekiah's dad, Josiah, is reigning as king over the house of Judah and everything is being done properly. OK, but nevertheless, they're also. Uh, seeing that they have done a revival that produced an outward change, but some of the heart of mankind in that particular region had not changed. So therefore, Zephaniah comes in with, again, the message of change and that the judgment day of the Lord would be coming. So let's get ready. Let's change before he comes in with that judgment. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and get started here. With chapter one, and it begins with. Now, let me give you this too. Zephaniah, Zephaniah's name is defined as Yahweh has hidden, or hidden, or hides. Okay, so that's the definition of Zephaniah, hidden. So, chapter one: the word of the Lord came unto Zephaniah, the son of Cushai, the son of Gedaliah, the son of Amariah, the son of Hekiah, in the days of Josiah the son of Ammon. He was the king of Judah. So we see this was prior to the moment in time whenever God did go into Jerusalem and he did judge them whenever his son, King Zedekiah, was king. So then he says, I will utterly consume all things from off the land, says the Lord. I'll consume man and beast, and I will consume the fowls of the heaven and the fishes of the sea and the stumbling blocks with the wicked. And I will cut off man from off the land, says the Lord. I'll also stretch out my hand upon Judah and upon all the inhabitants of Jerusalem. And I will cut off the remnant of Baal from the place and the name of the Chimerims with the priests. And them that worship the host of heaven upon the housetops. And them that worship and that swear by the Lord and that swear by Malchim. And them that are turned back from the Lord and those that have not sought the Lord nor inquired for him. For hold thy peace at the presence of the Lord God, for the day of the Lord is at hand, for the Lord has prepared a sacrifice 
and he has bid his guests. And it shall come to pass in the days of the Lord's sacrifice that I will punish the princes and the king's children and all such as are clothed with strange apparel. Okay, I'm going to stop right here because, again, he's talking about Jerusalem during that period in that time. Now, it didn't come when Josiah was king, that judgment. It didn't come to Jerusalem when Josiah was king. It came to Jerusalem whenever his son Zedekiah was king. Okay. But nevertheless, Zephaniah had the message and the word that it was going to come. Judgment day was coming. So that's why uh, we're in this particular book today reading because it goes in correlation with the book of Jeremiah and what was happening at that particular time in Jerusalem with the judgment that God began to go forward with upon uh, the house of Judah. And then from this verse, I want to go over to Jeremiah 39 because this also... Jeremiah 39 <clears throat> and verse 6 where it says here, the king of Babylon slew the sons of Zedekiah in Riblah before his eyes and also the king of Babylon slew all the nobles of Judah. So we see here, even though we're hearing about in this verse 8, it shall come to pass in the day of the Lord's sacrifice that I will punish the princess and the king's children, all such as are clothed with strange apparel. In Jeremiah 39, verse 6, we see the king of Babylon slew the sons of Zedekiah. So that day came to pass, okay? He slew the sons of Zedekiah in Riblah before his eyes, okay? Also, the king of Babylon slew all the nobles of Judah. Because, again, it was prophesied that it would come to pass because they were what? Clothed in strange apparel. They had begun to worship other gods. And whenever you were clothed in strange apparel, you no longer have the Holy Spirit. That's not the Holy Spirit that God sees. He sees strange apparel. He doesn't see the garment of the Holy Ghost. So that's how they were being presented toward God. And so, therefore, God went forth with his wrath because uh, they were worshiping another god. So then going on to verse 9, he says, In the same day also I will punish all those that leap on the threshold which fill their master's houses with violence and deceit. And it shall come to pass in that day, says the Lord, that there shall be no, there shall be the noise of a cry from the fish gate and a howling from the second and a great crashing from the hills. How, he says, to howl, cry, you inhabitants of the Mechitish, for all the merchant people are cut down. All they that do, uh, bear silver are cut off. And it shall come to pass at that time that I will search Jerusalem with candles and punish the men that are settled on their lees, that say in their heart, the Lord will not do good, neither will he do evil. For therefore their goods shall become a booty and their houses a des desolation. And they shall also build houses but not inhabit them. And they shall plant vineyards, but not drink the wine thereof. And I'm going to stop right here just for a second, because what did he say here in verse 12? It shall come to pass at that time that I will search Jerusalem with candles and I will punish the men that are settled in that particular place that say in their heart, the Lord will not do good. Neither will he do evil. OK, so they're saying you know, because they can just do whatever they want to do and the Lord will not do anything about it. So that's why he's saying he will punish them. Oh, so going on, he says, uh, verse 14, the great day of the Lord is near. It is near and it hastes greatly. Even the voice of the day of the Lord, the mighty man shall cry very bitterly. For that day is a day of wrath, a day of trouble and distress, a day of wastedness. A day of desolation and a day of darkness and gloominess, a day of clouds and thick darkness, a day of the trumpet and alarm against the fenced cities and against the high towers. And I will bring distress upon men that they shall walk like blind men because they have sinned against the Lord and their, uh, and their blood shall be poured out as dust and their flesh as the dung. Neither their silver nor their gold shall be able to deliver them in the day of the Lord's wrath. But the whole land shall be devoured by the fire of his jealousy, for he shall make an even, he shall make even a speedy, a 
speedy riddance. He'll get rid of them, put it into them real speedily, real quickly of all of them that dwell in the land. Now, that's when he was speaking of Jerusalem and the rebellion that Judah was uh, displaying in the land. And verse 14 of the same chapter to uh, chapter one, he says, the great day of the Lord is near. It is near the hasting greatly. Even the voice of the day of the Lord, the mighty man shall cry and they, they shall cry very bitterly. Verse 12, it shall come to pass at that time that I will search Jerusalem with candles. So see, we see it's Jerusalem. And again, like I stated, this was the prophecy that was given to Zephaniah prior to Jeremiah receiving the prophecy. So this is all basically confirmation. The Lord confirmed his word many times what he was going to do in Jerusalem to uh, the house of Judah and the house of uh, Israel. So they had a lot of time to uh, receive from God the message and then to leave because that was basically the message that Jeremiah came with for them. To re they had time to repent and then to leave, go under the leadership of King Nebuchadnezzar because of what they had done. And then God would be coming back to replenish them. Okay, so let me see. Uh, I do believe this is going to be it for chapter one for today's Bible study on this video. Another thing I want to take note of is the strange apparel. Uh, just in looking at that and how we see that uh, the strange apparel is symbolic to them not no longer worshiping God, no longer walking in faith, no longer walking in the spirit. As with a saint today that begins to worship another God or begins to uh, take on any other type of doctrine other than the word of God to be their standing ground that they stand upon, okay? Whatever type of doctrine that may be, I'm not going to throw any type of doctrine out there because that's not what this channel is all about, trying to put anybody on blast or anything like that. But nevertheless, it is just in, uh, for informing, of course, information, resource, ministry in the word of God and Jesus Christ. So uh, in the body of Christ. So therefore, we don't want to make anyone feel any type of way because they... Uh, worship another God, but we do want to present them with the knowledge of the one true God and give them the opportunity to learn of who he is and to be a part of his kingdom, to be converted and birthed into his kingdom and born again, okay, and to know his love and to know who he is and how he created that individual with a purpose and a plan and a destiny specifically designated just for them. Now, they could, no, loud, no doubt, even up to the point that the individual does not, uh, or may not know or be aware of God, the one true God, that's still a part of their destiny also because they're going to give glory to God. As they come into the kingdom, they're going to be able to explain to another individual, well, I didn't know God. They're going to give God glory, basically, bottom line, okay? And they were still all prophetically predestined by the heavens. Hallelujah. God bless you. God be with you. I'll see you on our next Bible study as we continue to go forward with the Feed My Sheep Foundation video channel.